London Mayor Sadiq Khan has today announced a new scrapper scheme that is supposed to help those people that will be impacted by the expansion of ULIS to the whole of outer London that is happening in August this year. So what is the scrapper scheme? How does it work? What are the pros? What are the cons? How can you benefit from it, if at all? I'll tell you everything in this video. Brown car guy. So to go with the forthcoming ULES expansion that's happening in August, London Mayor Sadiq Khan has proudly announced the biggest vehicle scrappage scheme ever. What is ULES? Here's the thing, there are still some people living under a rock or perhaps they're overseas that have commented on my videos asking, well, what exactly is ULES? ULES is the ultra low emission zone that was introduced in central London in 2019 and expanded out to the north and south circular roads last year. Basically, if you have, or rather, if you don't have a Euro 3 compliant motorbike, which is usually after 2007, a Euro 4 petrol car, which is usually after 2005, or a Euro 6 diesel, which is usually after 2015, then you have to pay a £12.50 daily charge to drive into the zone. And this also applies to those people living in the zone. So back to the scrappage scheme. This scrappage scheme, like previous such schemes, is supposed to be the savior for those of us, I should say, who don't have a ULIS compliant car but still need a vehicle to get around. So uh, the good news is that it's a 110 million pound scheme that is being launched today uh, and it's double the funding that was available for previous schemes. It's all coming from City Hall so it's not coming from the government. Now people can apply for cash grants of up to 2,000 pounds to scrap their car or bike and put that money towards a replacement. Businesses charities and sole traders can actually apply for grants up to £9,500. Keep in mind though, this is not available for everyone. It's for those on low incomes, so means-tested benefits, the people who are on means-tested benefits, plus those who are on disability benefits. And as for businesses, it's for those with 10 or fewer employees. So if you have 11 employees, you might need to sack someone. There are also EULA's offers such as discounts and subscriptions on rentals and purchases of bicycles and e-bikes and cargo bikes. Now those applying for the £2,000 grant can go for an alternative like getting two free annual bus passes along with a lower cash grant instead. Meanwhile, those with disabilities who have to scrap a wheelchair accessible vehicle can apply for up to £5,000. And they can also do that for a nominated driver who actually lives at a different address if, in the case if they don't actually drive themselves. Now back to small businesses and in fact charities as well, they can apply for up to £5,000 to scrap a van, up to £7,000 to scrap a minibus, and up to £5,000 to scrap a retrofit van or minibus uh, or even up to £7,500 or £9,500 if they choose to upgrade to a fully electric van or minibus, respectively. There's also an exemption up to October 2027, and this is for recipients of certain disability benefits, so probably blue badge holders, and again, for our nominated drivers if they don't drive themselves. This is for wheelchair accessible vehicles and adaptive uh, vehicles and this is also available for people who live outside of London so when they come in they can take advantage of that. You need to head over to tfl.gov.uk that website I'll put the link in the description and that's where you can apply for these. Now, by the way the annual £10 charge that existed for auto pay so that you'd be automatically charged if you entered into the zone is being removed but the fine however is being increased to £180 although that drops back down to £90 if you pay within 14 days. Now apparently 94% of cars in central London are already ULES compliant. In outer London that number is a bit less. It's about 85% uh, of cars are compliant, which of course means that 15% are not. This equates to around 200,000 vehicles that will be affected by the ULES expansion in August. Now the bad news is that of course this scheme isn't available to everybody. So if you're not eligible for this then you'll have to figure out what else you can do. And if you are thinking of changing in, uh, cars, then keep the following in mind. The average price of a used car in the UK is now £18,000 and that's gone up from about £13,000 pre-pandemic. 
It's an increase of five grand. And if you're thinking electric car, and of course that makes sense, right? Because the whole thing is supposedly about toxic air pollution and apparently there's a public health emergency. So we should switch to electric cars. Well, the average price of a used electric car is about 23,000 pounds. And if you're thinking about uh, buying a new car, then most EVs currently on the market are about 40,000 pounds and above. Having said that, a few uh, cheaper cars did enter the market last year and more will enter this year. Like for example, the excellent MG4, which starts at just over 26,000 pounds. Definitely worth checking out if you can. Keep in mind that for both new and used cars, we are currently suffering from a severe supply shortage. So even if you could afford to buy a new or even a used petrol or electric car, you may not be able to find one. And with ULEs coming in and further driving up the demand for these cars, expect it to actually become even harder for Londoners to replace their cars. There was a report recently on the news, in fact, that there was one company that sold used vans admitting that they simply didn't have enough vans to keep up with demand and that prices inevitably would go up and think also about like for like replacements yes i mean okay you can get a ULES compliant car an older petrol car although post 2005 for 2000 pounds you can it's definitely possible however it may not be the greatest quality car and it may need ongoing running repairs and maintenance which of course is going to add to your overall costs and it may not be quite as suitable for your needs as your current car. For example, anecdotally, I know that in outer London, a lot of the cars that will be impacted will be older diesel SUVs because those are the sort of cars that families buy because they need to get the kids to school or maybe they need to do the shopping, they need the space, or maybe they need to take the dog to the park and you need some space in the back to carry their pets. And if they're having to come out of that into a smaller ULIS compliant car, it, uh, it is obviously going to be a kind of hardship for them. So keep that in mind. All of this, and I don't even want to get into the impact that the ULIS expansion is going to have on, well, people like me, although I guess I am going to touch on it a little bit. I drive a 33-year-old classic, a 1989 BMW E30. It brings a lot of joy to me and to people that see it because they're an unusual sight. It's a rare classic. However, only classics on older than 40 years are exempt from ULEs and you make sure you have to register those, register them as classics. So my car, I'd have to put it into storage for seven years to qualify and I'm not going to do that. Now I've spoken about this issue extensively in another video which is above here or below, I'll put the link somewhere. And I've warned about the irreplaceable losses to our automotive heritage that scrappage schemes can inflict. In fact, let me give you a snippet of what I said in that video. You know what scares me? the most about the pressure on classic cars from the UK government is the idea that the scrappage scheme helps. No, no, no. Let me remind you of just some of the cars that have been lost to recent scrappage schemes. The BMW 2002, the Audi Quattro, specifically nine Triumph Spitfires, several MG Midgets, 731 classic Jaguars, including 45 of the beautiful XGS models, the spiritual successor to the E-Type, by the way, plus Honda Integra Type R's were lost, as were Ford Capris, even Lancia Deltas and the Lancia Vita Spiders, the Fiat X19, and even the solid Mercedes S-Class and SEC Coupes from the 1980s, plus many more. Some people who have these don't realize what they're worth. I mean, in terms of sentimental and historical value, as well as obviously monetary value. And they reckon that getting an easy £2,000 for them offered by the scrappage scheme is worth it. So great cars, potential classics, get needlessly crushed and we end up losing crucial parts of our automotive history. It makes me weep. It really does. So I would strongly urge anyone with a classic car or anything collectible, and it could be anything. I mean, keep in mind, for example, that the Ford Fiesta has been discontinued and now all the Fiestas are suddenly looking quite attractive to collectors. So it could be anything. If you don't know, check with a car club, go onto Facebook, go onto forums, go to car events and ask around. Please, please check with the classic car community to see if somebody out there might want to, even if it's in a bad condition, because they might want to take it on as a project car or they might want to use it to help another project car that's still a possibility it's all better than just scrapping the cars meanwhile i will try and do a video soon on the sort of cars that you might want to consider getting that are ULIS compliant and that can fit into certain budgets so make sure that you're locked onto this channel because that video will be coming soon Brown car guy. 
Hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please, please hit the like button and share this video as well if you can. And while you're at it, check out these guys who also sponsor my content. I am deeply grateful to them because it helps me to buy new equipment, put fuel in the cars, and yes, buy a cup of coffee. You can do the same. Just go here or right here on YouTube. Just hit these three little dots down here and click on thanks. Make sure you're signed in first. My content is free. But this is how you can help me keep it that way. I may even send you a gift. Oh, by the way, watch this next.